about 9.30 in the morning, and it's about 24 degrees, so it's quite chilly out here. And this camera shot's not the best lighting. The sun's just coming up over this hill behind us, so we're not getting very good lighting. But I was going to give you guys an overshot of the middle bay of the barn, which is wide open. This barn has about four stalls. Three of them are closed in. This middle one was left open. I'm going to start today at uh, taking this barn down. As you can see, it's seen its better days. The roof has fallen in. It's got a lot of damage to the sides. There's some water damage up here on the second level where the loft is, where a lot of the water's been getting through due to the age of the tin. So it's a good time to take this barn down and try to salvage some of the wood from it. You wait any longer on a barn like this in this condition and moisture just gonna keep on getting in here to this wood and it's gonna rot it away and you'll eventually be left with nothing. So, so let's take this thing down. Well, we got our first board off and I'm really not sure what kind of wood they used here. It's weathered and it's pretty nasty. So we're going to take it to the truck bed and take the scrub plane to it and see what kind of wood these old guys used when they built this barn. Alright, we're going to use the truck bed tailgate here as our workbench. We're on the shop, but that don't mean you can't hand plane just because you don't have a workbench. Uh, if you've seen my other videos, you've seen this thing before. This is my modified scrub plane, without a doubt the most uh, versatile tool that I have probably besides my axe. Well, we got the wood set up here in the truck bed. I've already dusted it off and got some of that grime off of it, so we're going to run the hand plane over here and see what kind of wood we got. Should be enough and uh, I figured this barn was made out of oak for the most part of it if you can tell from the view this is red oak I would I would wager the whole barn is probably going to be mostly oak <laughs> down you gotta be very careful and uh, be on the lookout for some valuable wood because I mean all the woods valuable in barns like this I think but when you run into some especially nice wood like this it's uh, more valuable than others this is a piece of quarter sawn oak and uh, the reason you can tell this is quarter sawn not only can you tell in the end grain that the growth rings run at a 90 degree angle with the face of the board but these rays right here People call this tiger striped oak. They call it all kinds of different terms. But this is the medullary rays that run on the face of the board, and that's an indicator that it's quarter sawn. And what you're looking at now is a large beam that runs the whole entire length of this barn. I got these two walls removed so you can really see the guts of this barn and see how it was built. Now this beam is about 16 foot long. I've already measured the length. And it is eight by it's like eight by seven. Eight by seven or about seven and a half. Now, uh, this beam is very valuable. It's pretty solid. I don't see any water damage in it. I hit it several times with my ax and my hammer. and It feels like it's a lot of good wood left in it. You can take a beam like this and reuse it. And uh, you can use it for the original purpose that it was used for. You can use it as a beam in another barn or for a fireplace mantle. Or, uh, or anything like that, but you can also take a beam like this and put it on the sawmill and saw it into boards as well. 
Now, as you can see, this is how they built this barn. This wasn't your conventional pole barn where they sink four poles in all four corners in the ground and build off that. They laid out beams here as seals all around the base of the barn and they elevated them on top of this stone right here. And they have stones on every corner where each beam meets each other. That's a, a very good way of building a barn and it keeps you from having to worry about having poles in the ground and them rotting over time. This way right here, everything's elevated off the ground and it really helps keep the moisture away. It's getting really windy out here so the audio may be terrible for this, but we took a break from the barn to look at this old farmhouse on the property and I peeled back this siding that was on it and this was some kind of tar paper the entire house was covered in. I peeled it back and it looks like we got some really nice boards underneath that this house was built with.